Hey guys, it's Jessie, and today I have a kind of late July anticipated releases. I know it's a little late, but we're finally back into the filming groove. I am bulk filming a ton today, and that is because I'm actually leaving to go to North Carolina for a week on another family vacation. Summer is ridiculously busy. Not always a bad thing, but it's just busy. We finally have the office done. If you did not see my new office library tour, go check that out. It's the most recent video on my channel. Yeah, everything's kind of falling into place. I am officially back on a more regular filming routine. I officially have, you know, the time and stuff like that. So yeah, I'm excited to kind of get back into all that. And of course, one of the first videos I wanted to bring to you back other than my library tour is my anticipated releases because I absolutely love doing these every single month because it helps me find more books. Not that I need them, but it also like seems to be one of y'all's favorites because everybody seems to love when I find these books. So let's go ahead and jump into it. So July is my birthday month. So I will probably be spoiling myself with quite a few new books. So, you know, I wanted to check out everything that was new and there are a bunch coming out that I'm super hyped for and hopefully you'll be excited about too. It is that time again when we get a new secret project. So secret project number three has come out on July 1st. That is today as of filming this. So it is already out. I still know nothing about this one. Somehow all I know is that this is a Cosmere Connection novel and I'm reading it. <laughs> Like, it should be on my Kindle right now. I will be definitely reading this, checking out the Cosmere Connections. I think we're having a live show with some friends at some point. And yeah, really excited. Don't need to like really talk about this one much because it's Sanderson project number three. We have quite a few coming out on July 11th. And the first of those is The Ebony Gate by Julia V and Ken Bebel. And this is the first book in a new series. And what got me with this one is the very first line in kind of like the synopsis and it says a female John Wick story with dragon magic set in a contemporary San Francisco Chinatown. A I love dragons. B I love the John Wick series. I haven't watched the fourth one yet. Don't come for me. I absolutely adore the John Wick movies. They are my kind of movie. My husband and I watch them together. Like we've seen them all multiple times. I love Keanu Reeves. I would probably watch Keanu Reeves do like a monologue to a trash can. Like, let's be serious. I love Keanu Reeves. I'll watch anything he's in. But this just like really sounded cool. And like, that was kind of all I needed, but I'll give you a little bit more of the synopsis. It says, Amiko Song belongs to one of the eight premier magical families of the world but Amiko never needed any magic because she is the blade of the Song clan or was until she's drenched in blood in the middle of a market in China, surrounded by bodies in the scent of blood and human waste as lethal perfume. The butcher of Beijing now lives a quiet life in the San Francisco importing antiques. But when a Shingami, the God of death itself calls in a family blood debt, Emiko must recover the ebony gate that holds back the hungry ghost of the Yomi underworld or forfeit her soul as an anchor. What's a retired assassin to do but save the city by the bay from the army of the dead? Right, that definitely sounds really cool. So I'm hyped for it. Comes out on the 11th of July. We'll be picking this one up. The next one coming out on the 11th of July is The Splinter in the Sky. And this is by Kemi Ashingiwa. It says that this is a diverse and exciting space opera about a young tea expert who is taken as a political prisoner and recruited to be a spy by government officials, a role that may empower her to win back her nation's independence. And it kind of pitches as, as perfect for fans of N.K. Jemisin and Nettie Akorafor. I love both of those authors and it sounds really fun. So definitely here for it. And T, the last book I read about T was I think A Magic Seeped in Poison and I loved that. So 
that kind of really got me interested. The next one is another one that sounded really cool that I hadn't heard anyone else really talk about it. Again, coming out on the 11th of July is The Saint of Bright Doors by Vajra Chandra Shakira. I hope I said that right. I looked up pronunciations and tried really hard. The synopsis of this one says, nestled at the head of a supercontinent framed by sky and sea lies the rot, the city of bright doors. The doors are everywhere in the city, squatting in walls where they don't belong, painted in vivid warning. They watch over a city of art and of rice, of plagues and pogroms, and silently refuse to open. No one knows what lies beyond them but everyone has their own theory and their own relationship to the doors. Researchers perform tests, take samples, and supplicants offer fruit and flowers and hold prayer circles. Many fear the doors as the source of hauntings from unspeakable realms. The rare unchosen few though, the doors are both a calling and a bane. Fetter is one of those few. When Fetter was born, his mother tore his shadow from him raised him as a weapon to kill his sainted father and destroy the religion rising up in his sacred footsteps. Now, Fetter is unchosen, lapsed in his devotion to both his parents. He casts no shadow, is untethered by gravity, and sees devils and anti-gods everywhere he goes. With no path to follow, Fetter would like to be anything but himself. Does his answer wait on the other side of one of the bright doors? That sounds really cool. It kind of reminds me of 10,000 Doors of January, which I absolutely loved. So it gives me those vibes. So I'm really excited. Our next July 11th release is Dark Water Daughter by H.N. Long. And this is a new series. It is not in her um, like Hall of Smoke world, I believe. So excited. I liked Hall of Smoke. I didn't love it. I liked it. So I'm excited to see what um, H.M. Long does outside of that world. This one says, a storm singer and pirate hunter join forces against a deathless pirate lord in his swashbuckling Jacobian adventure on the high seas. It says that this series is full of magic, betrayal, redemption, and fearsome women, and it's perfect for fans of Adrienne Young, R.J. Barker, and Naomi Novik. Honestly, that's all I really needed to know. I like swashbuckling pirate type fantasy, so I'm really here for it. So I was trying to do these in chronological order, and of course I missed one. This one is supposed to come out on the 5th of July, and that is Acts of Violet by Margarita Montemore. It says that this is a dazzling and twisty new novel about a famous magician who disappears, leaving her sister to figure out what happens. So I think this is definitely more like magical realism and then like hard epic fantasy like I typically read, but it sounded really cool. It says, nearly a decade ago, iconic magician Violet performed her greatest trick yet, vanishing mid-act. Though she hasn't been seen since, her hold on the public's imagination is stronger than ever. While Violet sought out the spotlight, her sister Sasha always had to be the responsible one, taking over their mother's hair salon and building a quiet life for her beloved daughter, Quinn. But Sasha can never seem to escape her sister's orbit or her memories of their unresolved, tumultuous relationship. Then, there's Cameron Frank, tapped to host a podcast devoted to all things Violet, who is determined to finally get his big break. Even if he promised to land an exclusive interview with Sasha, the one person who definitely doesn't want to talk to him. As the 10 year anniversary approaches, the podcast picks up steam and Cameron's pursuit of Sasha becomes increasingly intrusive. He isn't the only one wondering what secrets she might be keeping. Quinn, loyal to the aunt she's always idolized, is doing her own investigating. Meanwhile, Sasha begins to experience an unsettling series of sleepwalking episodes and coincidences, which all seem to lead back to Violet. Pushed to her emotional limits, Sasha must finally confront the most painful truths about her sister and herself, even at the risk of losing everything. Ugh. Definitely sounds really fun. The next one is actually coming out on the 12th of July, so we're back in chronological order. And this one is called Hooked by AC Wise. This is kind of another like Peter Pan-esque retelling. I have yet to find one that I actually love, but I'm always hopeful. It says that this is a gorgeous literary feminist take on what happened to Wendy and Captain Hook after Neverland. I mean, I've always been fascinated by the Hook story, so I really think if they do it well, it's gonna be really cool. It says it explores themes of grief, survivor's guilt, and healing broken bonds. 
Hooked is a modern day Peter Pan story, perfect for fans of retellings, Christina Henry and V.E. Schwab. Y'all know I love me some Schwab. I am a Schwab super fan. I love her. So that's that that got me hooked. Um, I've been wanting to read Christina Henry too. So there's that. Now we are on to the 18th of July and coming out is Immortal Longings by Chloe Gaunt. I will say I did not love her first series. Um, oh my gosh, what was it called? Um, I don't even remember what it was called. It was the Romeo and Juliet one set in Shanghai. I didn't like it. I DNF'd it. These Violet Delights, that's what it was called. I was like, I can't remember the name, but I know it's like a line from Romeo and Juliet. I, I DNF'd it. It wasn't for me, but I'm hoping this one is. I didn't hate like the writing style or anything, so it's not that. It just wasn't for me. So the synopsis for this one sounded really cool, so I'm hopeful. And I think we're getting it in a book box. It says, every year thousands in the kingdom flock to the capital Twin Cities where the palace hosts a set of games. For those confident enough in their ability to jump between bodies, competitors across San Ir fight to the death to win unimaginable riches. Princess Kala lurks in hiding. Five years ago, a massacre killed her parents and left the palace of Ur empty. And she was the one who did it. Before King Kasa's forces in San catch her, she plans to finish the job and bring down the monarchy. Her reclusive uncle always greets the victor of the games, so if she wins, she gets her opportunity at last to kill him. Enter Anton, an exiled aristocrat. Aristocrat? Aristocrat. It will always be aristocrats, I'm sorry. Every time I see this word, that's what I think. Enter Anton, an exiled aristocrat. His childhood love has lain in a coma since they were both ousted from the palace, and he's deep in debt trying to keep her alive. Thankfully, he's one of the best jumpers in the kingdom. Flitting from body to body at will. His last chance at saving her is entering the games and winning. Kala finds both an unexpected alliance with Anton and help from King Kasa's adopted son, August, who wants to mend Toslin's ills. But the three of them have very different goals even as Kala and Anton's partnership spirals into something all-consuming. Before the games close, Kala must decide what she's playing for, her lover or her kingdom. I like competition fantasy, so fingers crossed that I like this one. All right, also on the 18th, we have the Jassad Air by Sarah Hashim, and it says, 10 years ago, the kingdom of Jassad burned, magic outlawed, royal family murdered, down to the last child. At least, that's what Sylvia wants people to believe. The lost heir of Jassad, Sylvia never wants to be found. She can't think of how Nazil's armies laid waste to her kingdom and continue to hunt its people, not if she wants to stay alive. But when Arin, the Nazil heir, tracks a group of Jassadi rebels to her village, staying one step ahead of death gets trickier. In a moment of anger, Sylvia's magic is exposed, capturing Arin's attention. Now, to save her life, Sylvia will have to make a deal with her greatest enemy. If she helps him lure the rebels, she'll escape persecution. A deadly game begins. Sylvia can't let him discover her identity, even as hatred shifts into something more. Soon, she will have to choose between the life she wants and the one she left behind. The Scorched Kingdom is rising, and it needs a queen. It's an Egyptian-inspired fantasy where a fugitive queen strikes a deadly bargain with her greatest enemy, finds herself embroiled in a complex game that could resurrect her Scorched Kingdom or leave it in ashes forever. It sounds really cool. I love a lost heir and fit magic, and a lot of my favorites start with an entire family being killed and, like, one person left that everyone thought was dead. So there's that. Next up, coming out on the 25th of July, is The Weaver and the Witch Queen by Genevieve Gornishai. This one says, the lives of two women, one desperate only to save her missing sister, the other a witch destined to become the Queen of Norway, intertwine in this spell-binding, powerful novel of Viking Age history and myth from the acclaimed author of The Witch's Heart. 
Then also on the 25th, we have A Sun and the Void by Gabriela Romero Lancruz. And this says that in a lush world inspired by the history and folklore of South America, a sweeping epic fantasy of colonialism, ancient magic, and two young women's quest for belonging unfolds. Again, I think we're getting this in a box. I thought, maybe. I don't know. Because I think this one is by Daphne Press. I keep losing track of like what goes in what boxes because sometimes I try to figure it out. Also on the 25th, it's Lightbringer by Pierce Brown, book six in the Red Rising series. I feel like I don't need to give any description for this. For one, I've only read the first book. <laughs> I have them all. I've only read the first one. I liked it. So I'm excited to continue the series and I'm excited that this is coming out because that means I just have one more book to add to the binge read pile. And I know a lot of people are super hype about this one. And finally, we have the book that I may personally be the most excited about. And that is Blood Over Bright Haven by M.L. Wong. I love M.L. Wang. I loved Sword of Kaigen. It was one of my favorite books. Like I backed the kick. It's one of my favorites. So see that she's coming out with something new. I'm here for it. This says, magic has made the city of Tehran an industrial utopia, but magic has a cost and the collectors have come calling. An orphan since four, Skyana has always had more to prove than her fellow students. For 20 years, she's devoted every waking moment to the study of magic, fueled by a mad desire to achieve the impossible, to be the first woman ever admitted to the high magistry. When she finally claws her way up the ranks to become a high mage, however, she finds that her challenges have just begun. Her new colleagues will stop at nothing to let her know she is unwelcome, beginning with giving her a janitor instead of a fully qualified assistant. What neither Skyana nor her peers realize is that her tag turn assistant was once more than just a janitor. Before he mopped floors for the mages, Tamil was a nomadic hunter from beyond the magical barrier. Ten years have passed since he survived the perilous crossing that killed his family. But working for a high mage, he sees the opportunity to finally understand the forces that decimated his tribe and drove him from his homeland. Through their fractitious relationship, mage and outsider uncover an ancient secret that could change the course of magic forever if it doesn't kill them first. Skyana has defined her life by the pursuit of truth, but how much is one truth worth with the fate of civilization in the balance? This is a standalone dark academia with mystery, tragedy, and the damning echoes of the past. So excited. There are content warnings for gore, sexual assault, and suicidal ideation. Just thought I should throw that out there. Still super hyped for this book. And that is all of the exciting books that I have found that are coming out in the month of July. Let me know what you think of any of these books, if you've read arcs of any of them, if you are excited and hyped for them like I am, if you're gonna be pre-ordering, if you've already pre-ordered, let me know. I would love to chat about them. Thank you guys for hanging out with me and I will talk to you next time. Bye.